Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome once again to the Gentleman's Hour. There's so much on my heart that I want to be able to share with you today, so I'm not going to take too long in the introduction of this. However, as I start, I just want to mention a couple of things that um, this particular um, segment or, or episode uh, is open actually to ladies and gentlemen. Okay, it's for everyone, single and married. This this teaching is very, very foundational. And so I pray that even though the title of this is The Gentleman's Hour, that uh, ladies, you will take the time to actually join and listen to this teaching to prepare yourself as well. Okay? And um, as I mentioned, single and married, both of you are going to, uh, even single parents, by the way, uh, will benefit from this teaching. The second thing I want to say is that uh, this teaching is not originally mine. I'm not the one that came up with these concepts. Um, it came from a dear friend, Pastor Michael Todd. Okay, now I say dear friend because in my mind, he is my dear friend. He just doesn't know it yet. But Lord willing, one day perhaps we might meet. But having said that, uh, I want to give credit to Pastor Michael Todd who came up with this um, idea and I think it is uh, not, not revolutionary, but I think it is uh, biblical, more than our current standards and what our culture today, especially what our culture today teaches and lives out. So having said that, let's go straight into this. And uh, when I taught this about two years ago in uh, our church at Words of Life, uh, I basically call this the stages of life. I even wrote... Uh, some some um, blogs about this and posted it on Facebook. Okay, uh, I think I don't know about eleven or twelve um, segments uh, of of on this uh, particular topic. So, but today I do want to talk about it. I think I think it bears uh, a lot of relevance. And now because this is going to be posted on Facebook and um, uh, YouTube. I think there will be a wider audience. And so aside from those who have watched uh, Pastor Michael Todd's uh, teaching on this, you have this one as well. I know that there are others who have taught this as well and took it from uh, uh, Pastor Michael Todd's teaching. So let's just dive straight into this, okay? And basically what we're talking about here, I taught this under love, courtship, and marriage in uh, our church. And uh, even in our uh, national conference, uh, I think two years ago. But in any event, uh, I do want to uh, just uh, bring this out again today. And basically, this is how we prepare ourselves for life, um, in particular concerning marriage and family. What do we need to do to prepare ourselves for that? What are the steps we can take to uh, really develop this particular area of our lives and then how do we develop our family and balance everything out so that God's purpose is the one that will prevail in the um, building of our marriage okay so let's get straight into it the first stage uh, that is extremely extremely important and foundational not only to marriage but life in general even if you decide to stay single for the rest of your life because perhaps uh, you just don't want to get married or maybe because you feel it's your vocation and God is calling you to serve Him as a single person. Uh, everybody starts out in life as a single person. Nobody's born married. Nobody's born with a boyfriend or girlfriend. Okay, So God meant it to be that way. And it's important to understand the purpose of being single. So those of you that are single, listen very carefully so you so that you don't waste your single life. Okay? So, uh, singleness basically is a time of preparation. You are single. You are, in that sense, alone. Okay? And uh, this is the time to educate yourself. Prepare yourself for life. Uh, and that's why, for the most part, we go to school and learn our uh, reading and arithmetic and science and all these other subjects while single. We start out in, in uh, let's say, uh, nursery, going to kindergarten, 
right? Then we go to uh, grades 1 to 12, at least here in the Philippines, it's grades 1 to 12, going all the way until high school, right? And, and we're single. And it's supposed to be that way. You're supposed to stay single because this is the time to focus on yourself. This is the time to build yourself, okay? In, focusing on yourself, not in a selfish way, but for the purpose of developing yourself, building yourself, laying the proper foundation. This is where our parents are supposed to uh, lay on us the values that are supposed to be a part of our lives you know, for until death, really. And most of us develop our values within the first 10 years of our life. And so everybody's single at that time. And our values are developed whether by design or by default. And if, if parents don't put that, lay that foundation of the values and what will guide us through life within the first 10 years, then other people will, whether it's Hollywood, or, or culture, society, uh, teachers, uh, friends, barcada, everyone will be speaking into our lives. And if this foundation is not laid uh, well, then we're going to be pretty messed up. Okay, and, and the, the stability and the strength of our foundational values will determine how far we will go in life. Some of you may notice that um, you just end up facing one failure after another and it just ends up frustrating you. So you try harder and you realize that no matter how much you try, things are just not working out. Before you know it, you're in your 40s, your 50s, your 60s, and you look back and all you see are regrets. You see frustration, you see disappointments, and, and you've tried. You've really honestly tried your best, but it seems like your best wasn't good enough. And why? Because you go back. The foundation was not solid. And so this decisions we make um, lack wisdom. And so the first 10 years, parents, those of you that are parents, the first 10 years of your children's life are so important. Lay down solid foundations for them to stand on. The Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. And when we don't train up our children, when they are old, whatever was laid down in them, they will not depart from it. See? So it's very important that in, in your single life, this is the time to develop yourself. So students, for those of you that are students, this is the time to study. This is not the time to uh, play your computer games. I'm not against computer games. I'm not against recreation. We need sports. It's part of our total development and all of that. But, but you must develop yourself. Okay? Uh, this is the time to study. Learn things while you're single. Learn things because as you develop that habit, you'll carry that on way into your adult life and you will never stop learning. Because the moment you stop learning, you're as good as dead. You become useless. You become marginalized. You never, ever stop learning. I keep on studying about preaching, about the Bible, and, and many other things, science and, and, and neuroscience and physics and coronavirus. I mean, just medicine. It's just all these things. Uh, by God's grace, I just developed um, a, a love for learning. And so I'm constantly learning. But the point I digress. The point here really is to be able to, re, uh, to, to, to um, develop yourself mentally and emotionally. Okay, a little bit later um, for that one. This is also the time to discover your purpose. Perhaps one of the most important things you can do in your single life is to discover your purpose. Now, some of you are already married and you don't even know your purpose yet. And don't worry about it because... It's never too late. However, for those of you that are single, this is the time you must discover your purpose from God. And you'll understand as we get along, uh, rather as we go along, okay? So discover your purpose, understand why you're here, why are you on planet Earth, why do you have the kind of personality you have, why... Uh, 
Do you uh, tend to gravitate to certain topics? For example, maybe some of you are more towards science and math and some of you are more towards uh, the arts and etc, etc. I mean, discover. There's a, there's a purpose in all of these things. Not, we are not the same. Okay? Each of us is unique and so your, your purpose is connected to your uniqueness. Their con your purpose is connected to uh, your abilities, your talents, and strengths. Okay? Now, once in a while, maybe not just once in a while, uh, you may discover that your purpose is very little connected to the kind of person you are at the moment. Okay, I'll give you an example. When, uh, when I gave my life to Jesus... Almost uh, two weeks later, the Lord told me uh, that I would be a preacher. Now, that was extremely <laughs> unlikely for me because uh, I grew up very shy. You know, I was a very shy person. I was an introvert. I was, um, I felt, you know, I was a more of a science and math kind of person. So I was not gregarious. I was not, um, you know outgoing. Uh, I prefer to stay at home, read a book, and all of that. Now, my high school friends would probably disagree with that. You know, I, I, I drank a lot, went out a lot, you know, with my friends and everything, but, but it was a real struggle, okay? And, but that's a long story. Perhaps one day I'll share my testimony. But, but my point is that when God called me to preach, you know, I had such stage fright I remember, I think it was grade four, grade five, uh, where, where we were told to memorize one stanza of a certain poem and, and uh, speak in front of the class. And, and I was assigned Invictus. And so I was supposed to recite one stanza from Invictus. And I refused. I refused to stand in front of my class and say anything. I told my teacher, fail me in this um, assignment and I'll just make up for it some other way. That's how much stage fright I had. And for me to be a preacher, knowing that as my background, I felt maybe God had a mis made a mistake. But the thing is now, I love being in front of people. I love, and this is a struggle for me, okay? I'm... I'm, I'm speaking to a camera lens right now. I've said that before. You know, I'm getting used to it. And so it's, become, I'm, it's becoming more natural to me. But I prefer to speak in front of people. It's, it's my joy to be able to see faces, your smiling faces, look, your eyes looking back at me and responding to the things I'm saying. Okay? So in any, way, uh, in any event, this is the time to discover your purpose. Understand, uh, know what God wants you to do. And this is extremely important as we go to the next stages. Okay? Singleness is also a time to develop your independence. What do I mean by that? Learn to support yourself. Okay? You don't, get, you don't uh, go into marriage right after college. At least you shouldn't. Okay? Or while you're in college. I, I don't recommend that unless maybe you are taking an extremely long course like medicine and, and, and law and, and stuff like that. But even then, uh, it's something you want to uh, think about a thousand times before you actually tie the knot while you're in school. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. But this is a time where, in singleness, where you want to be able to learn to support yourself. In other words, learn how to clean your home in this case, maybe it's your bedroom. Start there. Cleaning your bedroom. Uh, kids, listen to me. Young people, teenagers. Cleaning your bedroom is such a foundational task that if you cannot keep your bedrooms neat, everything else in your... Listen to me. Everything else in your life is going to be messy. It starts in your bedroom. It starts by learning how to fold your blanket and fluff your pillow and sweep the floor, even if it's just your bedroom, okay? And if you share your bedroom with your, si uh, your siblings, then um, divide the task, okay? Maybe this week, you're going to take care of the bed. Next week, you take care of the floor. Next week, take care of the, uh, uh, the toilet, your bathroom, and so on and so forth. And divide the task. The point is develop yourself so that you can become more independent because if you can't keep your, uh, your room neat 
your house when you move out is going to be a mess. Okay, and if that's the case, you better be rich and afford maids to be able to help keep your house tidy. Otherwise, your house is going to be a pigsty and you don't want that. Okay, so start by keeping your uh, rooms neat and clean and dust free. Okay, another thing also is learn how to cook. This is not just for the women. Men, you got to learn how to cook and not just, uh, not just how to cook canned goods okay that's not that's not considered cooking you got to learn how to cook whatever your favorite meal is start there okay might be adobo sinigang um bopis i don't know i mean there're just tons of things you can learn maybe you like foreign foods you like japanese food korean food uh french food german food whatever it is vietnamese uh you know malay uh, i i i have a very wide an assorted uh, palette so there are many things I, I know how to cook um, I can cook if I have to but uh, that's you know my wife prefers to be the one to be in the kitchen and, and uh, supervise the cooking there my kids know how to cook as well okay some better than others but they know how it's just part of being independent why because eventually the plan is to move out of your parents home and you have to be able to sustain yourself okay and that's why uh, this is very important and it is while you are single that you need to get a job especially for the men but the women are not exempt from this as well but especially for the men because we're supposed to be the primary breadwinners our wives are not supposed to be the one to support us we're supposed to be supporting the family so ladies listen you get a boyfriend without a job okay I don't care how handsome, how cute, or whatever, but if he refuses to get a job and you want to marry him, be ready to support him, okay? And that's going to be a major frustration for you later on in life. So you don't want that. Make sure he has a job. Make sure he has a vision. He needs, it's not enough to just have a job. What's your vision? Where, where do you want to go 10 years from now? Will you still be in the same job doing the same thing? Do you see yourself um, becoming... Um, uh, uh, you know, where there's upward mobility in your job, maybe starting a business, whatever it is, but you got to have a job. You got to support yourself financially. Another thing you need to learn also while you're in single, you notice there's a lot of things to learn and you want to do this while you're single, okay? Because when you're married, ah, I cannot even begin to tell you how difficult that's going to be. But another thing you want to learn while you're single is about marriage don't think you can wing, wing it marriage is one of the most difficult institutions uh, there is to navigate it is marriage is not easy i'm telling you marriage is not easy it's a great thing when you have a great marriage but when you have a bad marriage well it's like it's like you're carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. It's no joke. So learn about, <coughs> excuse me, learn about marriage. Learn about the opposite sex. This is the time. If you're a guy, what are girls made of? What, what's, what's a woman all about? How does she think? How does she interact? How does she deal with problems? This is the time to learn about that. So have a lot of female friends, not girlfriends female friends and get to talk to them be a good friend and allow them to open up to you as well because learn from them and same thing the other way around if you're if you're a, a a girl then have a lot of male friends and get to know what they're like and why they think the way they think why they act the way they act why they respond the way they respond so it works both ways and so having a lot of friends while you are single is is a major plus to developing your life skills don't just have a few friends don't be too exclusive that you've just got this little click that you stay with all throughout your single life and you miss out on the richness of the diversity of characters and personalities and and just the the differences and uniqueness of different human beings even though there are only two genders male and female 
but our personalities are as as varied as there are people on the planet so don't rob yourself of this opportunity have a lot of friends you might have a good you know maybe an inner circle of friends uh, people that you allow to speak into your life but don't limit your friendships to just a few people because you are robbing yourself of opportunities for growth make tons of friends okay this is the time to learn what family is about uh, read books uh, there are a lot of good um, videos on YouTube uh, be, be selective on who you listen to Okay, you don't want to listen to someone who's got a chip on their shoulder, who's got, uh, you know, a broken foundation. We spoke about that the last time, remember? You don't want to be listening to people like that. Uh, they'll give you skewed information that will not help you uh, in the future. So make sure you get a solid foundation on this one, okay? So that's really all I want to say about that. I got to move on, but single life is so important. So I really just wanted to spend a little bit more time on this compared to the others, okay? Now, after, after uh, singleness comes intentional dating. Now, listen. Um, I recommend, personally, this just something personal, that, that intentional dating happens after you graduate. Okay? After you graduate or just about close to uh, your graduation. And the reason is this. Having a boyfriend or girlfriend while you're in school will be a distraction. Okay? That's not the time to have an exclusive relationship. Have tons of friends, yes, of, of both sexes, male and female. Have tons of friends, but don't get exclusive at this time. Um, and I know some of you might be saying that uh, they are your inspiration. And uh, actually, no, uh, I, I don't agree with that. Uh, I think they just uh, excite certain hormones in your body, right? And, um, and that's about it. Because if you break off, it's going to be really painful. And so much for inspiration, okay? It's going to become more like desperation. And so you don't want that. This is not the time to have to go through that. Develop yourself while you're single so that when you know, <coughs> excuse me, when you know, who you are, what you are, what you have, your purpose in life, and, and all of these things. You've developed certain skills so that when you, when you move out of your parents' house, you know you're not going to die. You, you, you've got life skills to uh, not only keep you alive, but to cause you to flourish and to thrive and to succeed in life. Okay, That's why singleness is so important. Now, uh, in intentional dating, this is not about trial and error. Okay, dating is not about making out. This is not about uh, experiencing sex or 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 uh, what people like to call practice marriages. Okay, where you live it together and see if this is the right person for you and so on and so forth. No, uh, intentional dating uh, is about pursuit. Okay, but you need to know what you are pursuing. Now, notice I use the word what, not who. This is not about the who, okay? This is about the what. In other words, we're not looking at your physical type. Oh, she's so pretty. He's so handsome. That's not the important thing at this time. I'm not saying that go and, and pursue someone that is not your type or anything like that. Now, that's not what I'm talking about. But, but you don't want to make the basis for your dating and pursuit simply something so shallow like looks. You want to go a lot deeper than that, okay? Uh, by this time, when you're ready for intentional dating, you should already know your purpose in life. And so now what you want to do is you are pursuing someone. You are dating uh, people, not a person, but people. You're starting to become more selective because you're now seeking someone that could be your lifetime partner. And so it becomes intentional because that's what you're looking for. In other words, I need to know my character, my strengths and weaknesses, my, um, my personality, okay? and very important, my purpose. So now I can look for someone that can complement me and not someone that will always be at loggerheads with me and I with her. 
see? So you got to look for someone intentionally that will get along with your character, get along with your personality, and will complement your calling in life and you, her calling or his calling in life, okay? That's why it's called intentional dating. This is not just about, oh, this is my type, you know, and, and he makes me feel good, she makes me feel good, and, and you know, I, I like uh, how I am when I'm with you kind of thing. That, that's too shallow, Okay, don't, that's not the purpose of dating. Understand that dating has a purpose, okay? And that's why dating needs to be intentional. You, you know what you want, and now you're looking for a person that has what you need and what you want, okay? But what you want and what you need are, are tempered by your character, your calling, your development, and so on and so forth. When you don't take the time to do that while you're single, then guess what? Anyone will do. And then you realize you pay for that decision later on in life. And it can be a very, very painful payment. And so you don't want to be able to do that. Literally, your future is at stake. Literally. And when I say your future, I'm not just talking about your marriage. I'm not just talking about your, 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 your um, happiness. I'm talking about your children and their children and their children as well. That's how important marriage is. And so you got to prepare yourself for marriage and, and picking the right person, not just someone that makes you feel good. Okay. You want to get someone of character as well, so that when the tough times come, they will still be there. They're not going to bail out on you just because you're going through a difficult time. It doesn't matter whether you're the male or the female, or your partner is the male or female. It doesn't make any difference. The, the, the important thing is both of you need to be strong. Not just the male, and definitely not just the female. Both of you need to be strong. Your future is at stake. And so, listen... Dating is not the time to fall in love, okay? And when I talk about falling in love, I'm talking about the feelings of love. You know, you get, uh, in Tagalog, we say kilig. You just get all flustered and butterflies in your tummy and, and goosebumps and, you know, all these juvenile feelings that will often mislead you. This is not the time. You are on a pursuit of your future it through a person. So you don't want simply your feelings to be the ones to guide you. I'm not saying discount your feelings. You want the person to make you feel good as well. Sure, of course, that's important. But it's not the only thing. Okay. So be guided uh, for this. And, and that's why I'm saying this is not the time to fall in love. Why? Because you want to be objective. Okay. The, the way we fall in love today makes us lose our objectivity. And you become so subjective and you think this is the person that will make your world. No, only Jesus can make your world. This person can destroy your world or can build together with Christ in your life. Okay, So you, you, you have to keep your head from being in a fog. This is not the time to fall in love. This is the time to choose your lifetime partner based on your calling and his calling or her calling based on your personalities and strengths and so on and so forth that I already mentioned. Now, one last thing about the intentional dating. When you think you've found someone, okay, and assuming that you've remained level-headed, you've dated this person a few times, you've talked about vari uh, a variety of subjects, not just what's your favorite color, what's your favorite food. Oh, this must be God's will because we both love the same kind of food, we both love the same kind of color. You know, it's... I'm sorry, but... Anyway, um, once you think you've found a person, then I don't recommend that you go and reveal your heart right away. Okay? This is the time now to pray. And if you've got godly parents who, uh, it, who are willing to also pray with you and help you discern whether this is the right person for you or not, then I recommend that you um, uh, take the time to talk to your parents and say, I think I've found someone. 
I would uh, um, uh, let me tell you about this person and I want you to be able to pray about this person. Maybe one time we can invite this person over for lunch, not dinner. Dinner is too intimate, but maybe for lunch or maybe we can just go out and have coffee together. Right. And so that way it stays informal. There's no you don't send mixed messages. OK. And uh, give your parents a chance to meet this person and talk to this person. And parents, you need to have a set of questions that you want to be able to ask things you want to talk about. Uh, things like, for example, uh, how are their studies? How did they do? Um, uh, family life, relationship with parents, relationship with siblings, things like these are very important. Uh, uh, their future, okay, uh, their dreams and ambitions in life. These are going to provide clues to help you in your prayer because you want to make sure that not only will this person uh, have the DNA for success, but also the ability to hook up well with your son or daughter. Okay, and this is very important. Now, those of you that are single, why is this so important? Because your parents have already been married. They know, they have an idea of the stresses of marriage that you don't yet. No matter how many YouTube videos you've watched and books you've read and seminars you've attended, um, marriage is like swimming. You can read all about it, but until you dive in, you don't really know how to swim. It's the same thing with marriage. And so you got to talk to someone who's been there, done that. And talk to your parents. They are a wealth of information. They are on your side. Remember that no, no uh, parent will want to destroy their kids. <laughs> they're, they're, there's no parent that wants that. Not a parent in the right mind anyway. So they want what's best for you. So talk to your parents. God gave you this resource that is just um, an amazing resource for you. Okay? So... Take advantage of that and <coughs> uh, talk to your parents, let them pray and let them give you their confirmation and blessing. Okay, I did the same. My wife and I, we did that uh, as far as we are concerned. Uh, we both heard from the Lord, but before, well, she heard first, but before she said anything, even to me, she waited for me to hear from God. It took another year. Okay, and, uh, and by the time we discovered that both of us had heard from God, before we went to the next step, we spoke to our respective parents first. And then we spoke and exchanged parents, so to speak, and spoke to the other set of parents so that they can get to know us and so on and so forth. And when all four gave their blessing, that's when we decided to uh, get ready for marriage, okay? And that's when we got engaged, which is actually the next step, engagement. So you have singleness, you have intentional dating, and you have engagement. Now, uh, let me say this. Today's engagement is very dif uh, different from the biblical concept of engagement. The Bible calls it a betrothal, okay? And it's, uh, it's a very, very serious step, uh, this betrothal or engagement, okay? Now, by this time, when you're ready to move in, into engagement, you have to remember that um, you pass through singlehood well. In other words, you prepared yourself, you know, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, every area of your life that you can think of, you've prepared yourself, okay? You have searched carefully, for the right person, the one that you will say, I do till death do us part, okay? Uh, you've done that, and now, by this time, before you get into engagement, you better be like at least 100% sure that this is the person for you, okay? And that's why you've got, you've got uh, the Lord to put the witness in your heart. You've got your parents uh, or whoever your guardians are, uh, and uh, uh, if your parents are not the prayerful type, I have no relationship with God, hopefully you've got a pastor that will help pray with you to find out whether this person is for you or not. And, and just maybe uh, interview the person as well and get to know the person and not just go straight into prayer, but will take the time to actually talk to the person. Um, 
Now, here's the thing, a question probably that you're going to ask. By the way, if you have questions, please feel free to ask them in the, in the comments below, and I will be happy to answer your questions. If it's a short answer, I'll answer it right there in the comment section. If it's long, I'll take some time to answer uh, in two weeks. We have this every two weeks. So in two weeks, I will take the time to answer your questions if it's not just a few sentences, okay? Now, some of you may be asking, what if... After all my preparation and my prayer and everything, uh, I think this is the person for me, but uh, my parents don't think so. My pastor doesn't think so. What do I do next? Okay. Well, there are a couple of, uh, a couple of di directions you can take. Number one, if you're absolutely sure, then what you need to do is to back off first because you don't want to go against your parents. You need your parents' blessing. Okay, and your pastor's blessing as well. So you want to back off first and not be bullheaded about this and trust God. If you really heard from God, then let God speak to your parents and let God speak to your pastor. Okay, And after some time, talk to them again and let them know maybe after a month or two and say, you know what, I've been praying about this. I've been seeking God because your your blessing is important to me and what you say is important to me. And so uh, I've taken a step back, but I still feel that this person is for me. Can you please pray again? Okay, And, and uh, they will. I'm sure they will. Okay, And that happened to me, as a matter of fact. And um, it was with the second person I thought was for me. And I'm glad you know, that I listened to my uh, stepdad because he was quite sure that this woman was not for me and I really felt she was and long story short um, uh, I waited 60 days two months literally 60 days to the date because that's what my stepdad said wait 60 days and if you still feel she's for you then I will go ahead and officiate your wedding and so I did I waited uh, 60 days and on day 56 God spoke to me and said she's not for you and so I look back, I'm glad I made the right decision. And it was not long after that that I met my now wife, Grace. Okay, and we were more cautious uh, by then. And I took the time to really pray and seek God's face, talk to my parents. And then later on, when I felt she was the one, talk to her parents as well. And when everybody had yes, we had six yeses, including mine. That's when we decided to move forward towards engagement, okay? So this is a very, very important step. And uh, uh, this is uh, the time when you want to be able to... See, engagement is basically saying, okay, uh, in, the, in, in a few months, maybe in a year's time, two years' time, we're going to get married. So this is the time now to prepare for married life. Okay, in other words... By this time, gentlemen, you should be having a job and preferably saving up for the marriage, saving for the wedding, sorry, saving up for uh, the place where you're going to be moving into because uh, the Bible does say for this cause a man shall leave his father and mother. So you don't want to be living with your parents. You don't want to be living with her parents. Okay, You want to have your own place. And it might be a very humble and simple place. It might be a one-bedroom uh, apartment and that's okay. At least you are together without the parents. you got to leave your parents for the sake of your sanity, your spouse's sanity, and, and uh, your marriage. Okay? you got to move out. you got to move out. And I know it's quite difficult at this time. Everything is so expensive. And uh, I know some of you are, are all living under the same roof. Sometimes it's uh, several families under one roof. Uh, that, I have to tell you now, I, I understand, okay, because of financial considerations and everything, but um, it's a formula for disaster, I'm telling you. It is a formula for disaster. I lived with uh, my parents first when we got married for about a year and a half, uh, about a year and a half, and I just wanted to soak my wife into the kind of culture that I grew up in, okay? Uh, our cultures were very different from each other. And um, so anyway, 
I, d I did that. And then after about a year and a half, my plan was two years. But after about a year and a half, the Lord said, it's time to move out. And so we moved out. I was not that financially prepared for it, but trusting God and, well, we haven't moved back to our parents' house ever since. And we're going to be celebrating our 28th uh, anniversary this year. You know, well, still later on this year, but, but 28 years when we've never gone back. And it's only by God's grace that we have gone this far. Okay, so engagement is this time to be, uh, to really prepare, prepare the home that you're going to have for your wife. Gentlemen, this is more your responsibility than the ladies, okay? Prepare the home, prepare for where you're going to be moving in. Um, this is a time to really uh, be fine, to become more independent. Okay, Maybe you're still living with your parents, that's okay, but you want to become more independent uh, on this, uh, in this uh, regard, Okay. Uh, maybe you want to start, uh, by this time you should know how to cook, you should be making decisions for yourself and not be so dependent on your parents for certain decisions, even like uh, the clothes you buy, okay? I was so dependent on my mom, I was so fashion illiterate that uh, when I moved out, I, I was so dependent on my wife for my own fashion. I, I never really bought clothes, it was always my mom. You know, and, and I guess my mom didn't trust my taste. And I liked my mom's taste anyway. And so, you know, I was okay with that. I never had to figure out, like, what's my type in clothes and, and stuff like that. I had to learn along the way. Now I can do that on my own. But uh, I still check on my wife. I want to make sure that I look good for her, not just I look good for myself. Okay? Uh, so this is the time when uh, you will now... Now, remember, uh, when you... But the Bible says that for this cause, you, a man and a woman will leave... Uh, sorry, a man shall leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife. That also speaks of developing new priorities. So now that you're engaged, we're in the engagement uh, part. Now that you're engaged, um, this is the time to start developing new priorities see it, it doesn't you don't change overnight where all your life you've been thinking i me and myself you know i'm developing me for me i, I choose clothes for me and so on and so forth you go out to a restaurant you're just thinking of what you like now you have you're going to be living with someone else and this is uh this person is going to be your your you're going to be one flesh with this person Okay, so you want to start thinking from me to we. You want to be able to start making that transition. Don't wait till you get married to do that transition. This is the time to, uh, uh, to uh, make that shift in your mind, mentally and emotionally, where now that's where you're moving. So you can still be dating, okay, each other, because after all, you know, you're, you're going to be together. So you can still date. And now you're practicing the we part, okay? Where you go out, you buy things and, and stuff like that. And um, now during the... Uh, one of the things about engagement now is that an engagement can be broken through a unilateral decision. You know, one of you will say, you know what, this is not working out, so let's just call this off. And that's it. It's done. Okay. Now, in a betrothal, during the Bible days, a betrothal is broken or severed only through a divorce. That's how serious a betrothal is. And that's why when you think about Joseph and Mary, they were not married yet. And when she was found to be with a child, Jesus, and Joseph said that he would secretly divorce her. Why? Because they were betrothed. And, and a betrothal, the the seriousness of a betrothal is like a marriage except you're still not living together. You still live with your parents. You don't live together. But uh, this is the time when the husband or, sorry, the, the groom starts preparing the place where they're going to live. See, and that's why even Jesus, you know, we are betrothed to Jesus. There's still going to be the marriage supper of the Lamb, and that's going to be in the future. So now we are engaged to Jesus, betrothed to Jesus. He's not our husband yet. Okay? And he has left, and he, he said, I will go and prepare a house for you. 
So that's what he's doing now. And that's what the men are called to do, to prepare that house, that home. Okay, That's his responsibility. She doesn't look at that. But that's why you want to know also her taste, so that it doesn't look like a bachelor's pan. You want her to be at home in the place that you are preparing. Okay? So basically that's that. And oh my gosh, our time has gone so fast. And, and we're, we're almost out of time. Our hour is almost up. I only have a few minutes left. I don't want to go into the next stage because we are definitely going to go over time. So I think for now we're going to end here. And then um, in two weeks, we're going to continue this. Okay? And um, like I said, this is extremely foundational so it's important for you to really get this well this is good because you know what at least we finished the single part after engagement is marriage so in two weeks we're going to be talking about marriage okay and uh, we're going to see what what this is all about and why single uh being single and the development of you during your single life is so 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 important and even intentional dating, all of these things are going to play a very important role in the success of your marriage, your family, and your future. Okay, so um, I think for now, I'll, I'm just going to end here and let you know that we're going to be back here in two weeks. Tomorrow is our ladies hour. Okay, and, and I've got a very, very... Um, interesting topic which is primarily for ladies but it'll be good for gentlemen to join this however is good for both so even if uh, this is over now and maybe you missed the beginning go back and just listen to it again this is going to be on youtube as well go to uh, search for wlcm main okay it'll be on youtube Tag your friends, by the way, whether they're single or they're married. Tag your friends. I know they will learn a lot from this um, series. Uh, uh, so, yeah, tag your friends, single or married, male or female, tag them. Uh, share this. Please feel free to share this, okay? I mean, there is no copyright on this except the right to copy. I always say that. And... Uh, um, I had a wonderful time with you today. I'm so glad that you're able to join me. And I look forward to seeing you again in two weeks. Okay, well, if you see this in a delayed uh, a telecast, then uh, maybe less than two weeks, but definitely on a Tuesday. Uh, today is, uh, what is it today? It's uh, uh, the 12th, I think, of May. Yeah, the 12th of May. And so in two weeks, it'll be the 26th of May. And so... I'll see you then, okay? And, and uh, until then, I pray that you will take your single life very seriously. Now, for those of you that are married, let me just say this, by the way, before I close. For those of you that are married, and you say, you know, I wish I knew this just a few years ago. I wish I heard this teaching and everything. It's not too late. It's not too late to develop yourself. And you will see, you will, uh, I want to be able to give you some hope. And as we go on, uh, you will see that there is hope for those of you that are married already, even if your marriage is not good at this time. Don't give up on your marriage, okay? I believe in marriage. I believe in you. Hang in there. And as we go along, you will learn a few more things, especially when we get into marriage and having kids and all that stuff like that. So even if you are married and you did not know all these things, you didn't take the time, you just thought that this was the most wonderful person and now this is the most wonderful monster that you're married to, that's okay. Because God is in the business of making all things beautiful in its proper time. So get ready because your marriage, your family is about to take a turn for the better. Okay? I just want you to know that. But uh, before I do close, I want to close in a word of prayer. Please join me as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray right now that uh, for those who are single, I pray that they will take their singlehood um, very, very seriously. That they will take this time to develop themselves, to study, to learn about many, many things while they are unencumbered by the burdens of marriage and family. That they will really use this time to develop themselves, to grow themselves. And for those who are married, Father, I pray. For those who have a good marriage, 
I thank you, Lord, because a good marriage is like heaven on earth. And if it's not heaven on earth, then it's not a good marriage, but it can still become that. And for those who are having a difficult time right now in their marriage relationship, maybe in their family, Father, I, I just pray right now that you will help them and guide them. Uh, a marriage is not too broken that it cannot be fixed. In fact, Lord, you said that the only reason why Moses allowed divorce is because of the hardness of heart. It's not because, it's not because things are irreconcilable. It's just hearts that refuse to change. And so, Father, I pray that you might soften the hearts of both the husband and the wife, the dad and the mom, the children, O oh Lord, so that things will begin to change in their families. I speak a blessing upon families in the name of Jesus. I speak a blessing to you, son, to you, daughter, in the name of Jesus, while you are single. Take advantage of being single. To the husbands, the wives, the dads and the moms, I pray, Lord, a special grace upon them that they might understand the purpose of marriage and pursue that and allow you to be the one to build the family because unless the Lord builds the home, we labor in vain. And so, Lord, may you be the foundation, may you be the center, may you be uh, the king of our family. And so we thank you, Lord, and we bless you for this time that we had together. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So don't forget, guys, uh, you've got questions, write them down, okay? I will be happy to answer them. If you, uh, if you have got comments, please, by all means, write them down. I will be happy to read them. You need prayers? Write them down as well. Pray your prayer concerns. I will be happy to pray for you. Okay, so whatever it is, write down your comments and share this. Please don't ask permission. Go ahead and share it by all means. Tag your friends or post it on their wall. Whatever it is, just get this out because this will really be a big help, I know, to other people. We're going to see you in two weeks. We're going to continue this uh, series, this teaching, okay, in two weeks. Until then, have a blessed time. Even though you're quarantined, be blessed anyway. We'll see you next time. God bless you. Bye.